impact now? How do you uh, move forward after these matches? After Alfred? Well, we've, you know, we have to move forward, and that's that's what we do. I think is, you know, a team is just like in our everyday life. Things happen, and you have to deal with it, and you have to move forward, and you you want to be better every day. That's our that's our goal every day. I've I've said that multiple occasions, and that doesn't change. We're trying to get better today in everything that we do. I'm with Frank uh, now, and you know, and just he'll get more playing time, obviously. He does play. Yeah, we're waiting. Uh, update on Frank is uh, he's feeling better. And I, I believe we're listing him as probable, probable right now. So hopefully he feels even better tomorrow and, and he'll be ready to go. If he can't go, uh, other than Dennis, what, what do you do with the point guard spot in this, in this moment? Well, we have the option, you know, with two-way player Kadeem. So, I mean, that we have that option as well. What's the, what's the plan with RJ with the Rising Stars? Will he play in that game? His RJ's getting better. He's progressing. He's not to the point where he's practicing yet, but he's doing some workouts on his own. So the progression would be, you know, we get to the point where hopefully he could practice next week, maybe, and then that would put him on track where, you know, you know, potentially he would be ready to play after he gets some practices. So he's he's on a path where, you know, that looks promising. Mike, between now and February 6th, obviously the deadline coming, does it change your thinking at all in terms of how you put a rotation together um, and more of an emphasis on veterans? You know, how does that play a role with anything you think? Well, it's, it's really, we have, have stayed with the, the same philosophy. It's just the game will dictate you know, how, how we use the guys in the rotations. And you know, you've seen you know, the game the other night we got to the to the fourth quarter and and we we got Wayne out there. You know we needed Wayne, so it's we've kind of stayed with that, and that's that's been our approach. I guess the flip side to that is, do you expect once the trade deadline is gone that those expectations change and there's more of an emphasis on you younger players at that point? Well, at this point, we're moving forward as as we have, so yeah, not not getting too far ahead of ourselves and just dealing with today. I think. That's been a good approach with our group. We deal with today, and can we improve today? And I think that's manageable for all of us, you know, to keep that that approach to it. The Mike, team, a little the different. Team put out a uh, statement um, saying about Marcus's comments, saying that he um, doesn't doesn't uh, condemn what he said, but he believes the um, apology was sincere. As a coach, how do you handle that situation, or do you? What I'm not sure what you're asking me. The, the, you said that the I didn't hear everything. the apology from the. Did you see the um, Did you see Marcus's apology and then did you see the statement from the team? I have not. Okay. So. Um, do you, were you aware of his comments? After yes. The so do you, as a coach, do you even address that or do you just let it address it with him or with the organization? I, I think he's he has made his statement. I think the team made their statement, and I think. It's sincere. I think it's. There's no question that that organizationally and individually, these are these are high quality guys that are here and in, in in this organization, and the respect that we have, you know, as we've talked about for our fan base, for you know the WNBA, for for females, for everything. We have female officials. We have so many people. We have you know females on our staff that are very valuable. So I think there's a high level of respect across the board there. What goes wrong when you guys have had quite a few games like the other night where you know the margin really got out of hand and you know, it seems like there's enough talent here that you know, when you took over the games are competitive and it's kind of gotten away a little bit from time to time. What has to go wrong to you know for for it to be that bad? Well, the Memphis game they hit three threes in about a minute. It was a 10, 12 point game all the way. We missed we missed a three at I don't know what the time was exactly. It was right in front of our bench. We hit a transition open three, missed it, that would have taken the game to nine. And we had a couple of free throws in there. It could have got to six or seven. So it's the game's right there. You know, we we had to come back and then they hit three threes in that just changed the game. That was that was the difference. It was basically you know, the game was in the balance with two minutes to play. It was being decided in the last two minutes. That's what you try to get to. And and we'd like to be the team that hits three threes in a row and changes the game. And sometimes we have been and we will be again. But that was the story in the Memphis game. And it, and it can it can turn that quickly, as you know. Those were, we didn't score, they came down, hit a three. We didn't score, they came down, they hit a three. That's how quick it changes. It went from 
the game was whatever it was at, 10 or 12, and it went to, to you know, 16, 18 that fast. Is that where some of the frustration comes in from um, a guy like Delford, where you guys have had a bunch of games like that where it could have been gone your way and, you know? Delford, we've got, we've got guys that are passionate. They're passionate about the game. They're passionate about the Knicks. They, they feel the, I think, you know, the value of, of playing in Madison Square Garden and the whole things, they're passionate. Sometimes, you know, that, that passion comes out and what we're, you know, our focus, how do we channel that passion into positives for 48 minutes? And that's, I think that's probably what every team in the league is doing is how do we channel, you know, the best version of ourselves into a 48 minute game. When you talk, <laughs> Well, two two things. One, I, I'm not ever going to comment on on another team's players, you know, in in any way. And and secondly, the NBA's already ruled on it. So what I think at this point is not not important. The ruling's in place. We're we're moving forward from there. Well, I think, you know, historically you've seen things like that happen in the past. So right, wrong, indifferent, those things have happened.